Oh. And they got TK to co-host. Tommy Kendall? I love that guy. Not Tommy. The other TK. Who? Who's the other TK? IndyCar driver Tony Kanan. He's so dreamy. So both TKs are on wind tunnel tonight? Paper says it's them and not Robin Miller. He's still a loser. Yay! Robin Miller! Robin Miller! Tunnel with Dave to Spain is presented by Golden Corral. Welcome to Wind Tunnel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm filling in for the vacation Dave to Spain with the uh, the driver of the 11 711 car in the IndyCar series. You might recognize him, uh, Tony Kanan, a little bit later. The other TK, Tommy Kendall, is going to join the conversation. We're going to talk to Duncan Dayton about this team's Le Mans debut this Saturday. And I'm going to share my top 10 USAC Sprint Car drivers of all time. If you kids want to get on in the action, give us a call at 1-866-W-TUNNEL. Join the live chat at speed.com. Post, post a comment on our Facebook page or send an email to windtunnel at speed.com. Not speedtv.com, TK, speed.com. So, brother, you look much better than I pictured you because last night was open season on Tony Kanan in at Texas. Uh, you had... Former champions going after you. You had your teammate going after you. Some of your old buddies going after you. You dodged about nine bullets. And guess what? You look so much better than I thought you were going to look. Do I? I thought, I thought I was nice to people. But before I start talking, I, I, I got to change something. <laughs> I like this. This is how we had the set wrong, didn't we? This looks better. This right is now. a little bit closer than it yeah, was. Maybe. A lot closer. Well, and, and I think we've talked about this before. It was Texas is, I mean, I don't like watching it because it's like every lap's like this. And it forces you guys to drive that way. And you've had um, probably a million close calls in the last seven or eight years you've driven there. But, you know, I mean, Dario says it best, doesn't he? I'm just glad to walk out of that joint. Yeah, when you finish that race, you're just glad that you finish and you're in one piece. I mean, it is exciting for the fans, but uh, definitely, uh, you know, it wasn't nice to have all these guys taking a shot at me. I mean, uh, at this point, with Dixon, was really close, touch, almost touch wheels. And, and to me, uh, the worst one was this one, totally unexpected. And people thought I was mad because I lost 10 positions after that. And that's not the case. I mean, I've seen Zanardi losing his both legs. I see Kenny Brack almost dying because of a reckless uh, move like that. So uh, not upset. She drove a great race. I think one of the best races of her life, it was yesterday. I just didn't understand what was that move was all about. It wasn't the last lap. It wasn't for the lead. But uh, I respect that. I, I will turn the page and, uh, you know. One day, we'll see, we'll see. I predict that you'll be charging to set up cars at Indy next year from certain teammates, but that's just me. I'm not sure that's really going to happen. Well, then, uh, you know, it's going to be up to me to return the favor or not, so we'll see. <laughs> well, I tell you what, the thing I think that's really interesting about Texas, too, is is that, you know, every year we go to Texas, and every year we end up talking about all the near crashes. So the IRL's been lucky they haven't had anybody go in the grandstand. Thank God Kenny's, you know. No, for sure. I think, uh, you know, it's not just about one. I mean, look how many close calls I had, and that's Texas. That's what we say. It is Texas. The fans love it, but, I mean, uh, it's it's crazy. I mean, that night, it's so stressful. I mean, I couldn't go to bed until, like, 5 in the morning. I was so, I was so wound <laughs> up after that. All right. Come back to the madman, Tony Kanan. We're going to take a look right now at Hot Topics. IndyCar announced their new engine rules for 2012 this week. And to the delight of almost everyone, turbos are coming back. And manufacturers will be able to run their choice of four or six cylinders. I'm hearing Ford, Audi, and possibly Renault are interested in learning more about the details of this formula. Announcement on 2012 chassis specs is expected within the next two weeks. On to the race in Texas Saturday night, where Danica Patrick had people cheering again, especially when she passed pole sitter Ryan Briscoe late in the race to take the lead. But Briscoe got back around and took his first win of the year for Roger Penske. Danica's second place finish was the best result she's had since winning Motegi in 2008. The scariest moment of the night came when Indy 500 rookie of the year Simona Di Silvestro hit the wall and caught fire. Then it turned into amateur night at the local figure eight track because the Texas crew and usually competent IndyCar safety team looked like the Keystone cops as they watched Simona's car burn around her. Somebody was finally smart enough to yank her out of the car and fortunately she suffered only burns to her arm and plans to be in Iowa in two weeks. 
TK, you start out in cart, 900 horsepower with turbocharged engines. We're going back to turbocharged engines. I, I see a lot of smiles from a lot of guys that have had that power behind him before. Yeah, I'm an old timer. I love turbos. I think uh, the way the turbo kicks in and it pulls your neck back, uh, it's it's nice. I'm a big fan of those engines and I think it's great. Okay, now Randy Bernard and the boys, they're at Moe's Steakhouse right now, or maybe they're, they're in Indianapolis watching us. May, the most important thing is that they're going to talk to the chassis guys this week and they're going to get all the pitches. What do you want to see in the chassis for your for your new for the 2012 rules? Well, first of all, something affordable, and I believe that uh, you know uh, it, it, with with a certain price that everybody can afford. But the most important thing, it needs to look like a race car to me, and it still needs to look like an open wheel. I can see why we're covering the wheels, but the front so we don't hit. But uh, it needs to look like a race car. Well, I can't imagine what you're talking about, <laughs> but I think Ben Bowlby's got a lot of good ideas about containing costs. Uh, the, the choice of the fuel mileage and, and, and making, making the engines really, you know, more affordable so we can have more teams. And I think if we get two engine manufacturers or three possibly, two or three chassis manufacturers, get some money back into sport, you can have your own plane. I can keep my job at speed. It'll be great. All right, more with, more with TK right after this break. Don't go anywhere. TK, we've talked for the last couple of years. Ganassi, Penske win every oval race. You know, Justin Wilson, he got a, he got a victory. Ryan, Ryan Hunter, where your teammate, got a victory this year um, at, at uh, Long Beach. But it just seems like, for whatever reason, and, I, and you had a pretty good answer in May, these guys have, some, even though we have the same cars and same engines, these guys have something that you used to have in 2005 and 6 when you were a bully. What do you think it is, and how do you catch them? I wish I would know. I mean, we're being trying to, uh, to figure out what it is, and... Uh it's tough. They have speed, or we, I mean, they, people say it's the same cars, but uh, they found something that we haven't. And I think uh, we're much closer now. You know, we, we definitely uh, are catching up. If you watch the race last night, and, 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 uh, but they still are, you know, especially in qualifying, they're still ahead of us. I was going to say, between Indy and last night, you guys had four people in the top seven, all, you know, all four of your, your three of your teammates. So you have made strides, and it's just they still find a way to win the race. And when you were dominating and winning, you guys had something that maybe other people didn't quite have yet. And you said at Indy, it's not mechanical. It's not necessarily set up. I don't think so. And, and you have to you know, think about it as well. We lost some people to the other teams. I mean, I lost my engineer, Eric Topensky. Uh, Martin went to Newman Haas. So now what we had, they have, and they add on top of it. So... Uh, it's it's been very competitive and for us i mean that a team that is so used to win a lot of races uh, it's tough it's tough on everybody but we're working on it that's all we got to do we got to work right alan mcdonald went to tags and he's had a good thing let's take a phone call because we got a man in pennsylvania that wants to talk about the indianapolis 500 where tk was the star john go ahead talking to tony canon hi tony C can, um, talking about indy you should get a uh, you and mario andretti and tom sneva should write a book together on how you guys went from dead last in the field to almost leading in what 20 laps uh, it was the rest of the drivers just asleep or did you just well, well, we I know. <laughs> we played. I played really easy. I said I'm going to take it easy on the start because everybody really. It's a 500 mile race, and uh, everybody thought I was going to take it easy. But I had a, I had a bet with my mechanics that I had to pass 12 cars in one lap, and I only passed eight. I still <laughs> lost 100 bucks, but uh, it was fun, man. I have to say, uh, although it wasn't the result that we wanted, and the crowd, the fans. I mean, everybody was cheering so loud when I went to second place that. Uh, I, I, you know, I thought I had gone through any, everything in my life in the 500, and I just realized that I haven't. And uh, it, it was a great experience. Although I haven't, I didn't win the race. Uh, you know, it was nice. It was nice. What do you? Th I asked Frank Keaty after I said, "What did you think when your mirror was full of com car number 11, the guy starting last row?" He said, I, "I really totally expected he'd probably be up there." Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not trying to. You know, I, I was doing my race, but uh, I knew uh, I was coming. I mean, I had a car. We had an unfortunate weekend, especially on Sunday. But we had a car to be in the top ten, and uh, you know, my guys did a great job in the pits, and uh, they put me there too. And, and I was racing. I, I had nothing for Dario. I have to say, uh, he was pretty fast. But uh, you know, I was. I enjoyed. It, you know, I finally enjoy a 500 mile race the way it should be. Although I did not win the race. That was my best 500 by far as far as a driver having fun.
Now, a couple years ago, I bet you $100. I was said something about nobody's going to win a race the rest of the year. You bet me 100 bucks, And I won. Uh, and you won, and you framed it. So now we got a $500 bet this year. And after the last two races, are you feeling more confident, or do I, do I ask for small bills? You're going to lose. You know that. I mean, I won. I framed that hundred dollars. I don't know if I'm going to frame the five hundred. You know, the four, the five hundred dollar bills you're going to give me, but you're going to lose it. That's a uh, that's a month's salary here for me at Speed, brother. Well, Think it's about your problem. That. But the most important thing to remember is it's all in the name of sport. It's not really monopoly money. It's real money. All right, don't go away. TK is going to be back. The other TK is standing by in California. He's got women around him in a hot tub, and he's got a surprise guest in the background. Ever wonder what happens when a Brazilian goes to the Indiana State Fair for the first time? We'll see next. And where will A.J. Foyt rank on my all-time list of USAC Sprint Car drivers? Is he even on the list? Stick around to find out. We'll be right back. Drivers who want to get bigger for just two dollars more. Order at PapaJohns.com. The most amazing thing about the State Fair are the people you see. Tony Canani eating a grilled cheese sandwich in one bite. Trying to eat a turkey leg. What was that? that Don't was, remember. Oh, that was a that was an elephant ear, son. Oh, but the yeah. great thing for me was when you shot a basketball for the first time in your life. We knew you were no Kobe Bryant, but I was impressed with what's his form. No arch. Yes. <laughs> what I really liked though was when you threw the softballs. You threw those hard. Now this is the Torch Club, and you want to welcome Simona de, Silve Simona de Silvestro to the club. She said she's now part of the Torch Club, not the Crispy Critters, but the Torch Club, <laughs> and there's a big difference. We're just glad she only got slightly burned. Now. Let's talk a little bit about your team, Andretti Autosport. When Michael kind of takes over the team, you're the leader. Uh, they bring Ryan Hunter Ray in. You Which guys, is a, a you big guys hit it off immediately. For us. Yes, I mean, uh, he he did. A, he's been doing a great job. I mean, you look at the he won the race for us after two years that this team hasn't won a race. And uh, yesterday, broken finger, two pins. I make fun of him all the time that he's little finger, <laughs> Ryan. He's probably watching us, but he drove a hell of a race from. You know, twenty third or something. And then they had a horrible, they had a horrible pit stop, and he went to back. And then exactly. you two guys. No, we had a nice battle, and he realized that his car was a little slower. So we talked over the radio between the spotters, and we got together in a way of, you know, let's <laughs> let's race tight, and uh, the faster guy goes to the front. I went to the front, tried to pull him with me, and uh, that's the way teammates should race. And uh, you know, he's a great addition to the team. You know, right now he's still, he's still struggling for the budget of his car. I need Ryan and the team. I mean, Marco did a great job. Danica did a great job yesterday in the race. But Ryan, he's my wingman. I mean, he's been pushing me to the limit every time. I mean, the kid just not lit up. I mean, he looks at me and, and he wants to beat everything, everybody. He's not happy if he's not first all the time. What What do you put the percentage on of him continuing? 50-50, 70-30? No, I'll put whatever I can. No, I would say 80-20. 80, 80, really? I mean, uh, you, know, you can't you can't leave a talent like a talent like that at home. You can't. And plus, Izod has done such a good job promoting the series, and he's their guy, and he's on all the commercials, and he won a race for him at Long Beach, the best American race to win out of the Indy 500. So I mean, all that stuff was good. I mean, we always talk about that. You know, the the league needs more Americans. Well, there is one man, and there's one of the best out there. Yep. So and let's keep him around. Let's and, keep and, him uh, around. And Michael is working really hard. I mean, I flew with Michael yesterday after the race, and. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever we can. I just told him I'm not going to take a pay cut to, to sponsor him unless he puts my name on the car. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely need him around. All right, we're going to take a call about a NASCAR race, even though we're open wheel people. We are, are equal opportunity offenders. So we got a call from Helen in Pedro, California. How are you, dear? All right, we're going to take a call about a NASCAR race. Oh, turn your, turn your radio down, hon. Hello? Helen. 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 Okay, Helen's gone. Anyway, she she was asking about Joey Logano's dad getting involved. You had a similar situation a few years ago at Watkins Glen when you and Sam Hornish are having words and his mm -hmm. dad comes up. Yeah, I mean, I was really surprised at the time. I wish sorted that out already, but I mean, to me, you're in a, in a world-class sport. You got to the top. It's not a place for your dad and mom to be around. You want to play with the big boys, be a big boy. Fair or not, the guy took you out or not, hit you or not. 
Go take matters in your own hands. Your dad needs to be in the grandstand with a popcorn and maybe a Diet Pepsi or something like that and then watching the race and don't get in the middle. I mean, accidents happen. I understand it's racing. We all get hot, but come on. You know, you don't need your dad to defend you. No, and, it, and it's tough, too. When I think that the most important thing is is if you're if the size of Joey Logano, you should always have 30 or 40 people in between you. And then you can really get mouthy and tell this guy you're going to kick his butt like that. Yeah. See, it, that's the best. I mean... Uh, all that I think is just a, a, a lot of scene. I mean, he was he gonna hit Harvick or Harvick gonna <laughs> hit him? Let's let's cool off. I mean, I've done it, and what happened with me in, in Hornish was the same thing. And his dad eventually pushed me away, and that's when everything starts. And and you know, racing is just uh, it's tough sometimes. But I think again, your parents should not be around. I like that. All right, now we're gonna go out to the West Coast, the left coast, and we're gonna talk to one of the great legends, one of the great talkers. One of the great salesmen in motorsports. His name is Tommy Kendall. Will the real Tommy Kendall please stand up? The debate begins right after the break. Will we be joined by Speeds, Tommy Kendall? Oh, he is standing up. I'm so sorry. Back to wind tunnel, the tail of the tape. The real TK. Canon 23 wins, Kendall 46. Canon two championships, Kendall eight. 5-5 five, five to 6-5. Pretty even, I think, because... He's eight years older, though. That's right. He's a fossil. He is. And the sad but thing... I retired when I was 31. What's that, TK? I retired when I was 31, though. That's right. Well, can in we count prime. my uh, go kart wins as well? My seven championships <laughs> that I won in go kart. I, and, uh, I don't you know. know. <laughs> I'm not sure. All right. Other than I've got the the thing he can't respond to. Do you have a chicken car? No, I don't, and I loved yours. And you are the real TK. I have to give you that for that for sure. He was the first TK, also, right? The chicken car when you drove that to the cart test that day at Fontana. Well, I had a photographer with me, and he said. What would I said? Oh, that guy right there. He he used to race and he had a bad hit injury and he's making a comeback now. He's a cabbie in L.A. <laughs> with the chicken car and the guy went really well. Good luck to him. All right, you do all these great test drives for speed, T.K. And you're also the voice of reason for Paul Tracy, sometimes as therapist. What else you been doing, brother? Well, just been uh, hanging out here at the Hotel California. I've been tooling the chicken car a little bit. I banged myself up though, so I had I broke my foot, and while I was in there, I had him fuse the right ankle to address my injuries from the Glen. So I'm definitely hobbling right now. But uh, other than that, just enjoying life. And how did you break your foot, if we might ask? On a, on a motorcycle. On There's two a kinds of riders: those that have gone down and those that are going down. <laughs> ask, right. ask Valentino Rossi. This yes, uh, that was nasty. All right. I was going to say, give a shout out to Valentino. I don't know if you watched the Texas race last night. Hopefully you did. Uh, Danik had her best race in a couple years, maybe the best race she's ever driven. You know her as well as anybody, TK. What do you make of jumping back and forth, NASCAR and this? And, and she's really been in a slump until, you know, recently, like, you know, 24 hours ago. Well, you know, I'm not close enough to really make a lot of calls. It's an easy thing to say that it's a lack of focus, but I don't I don't think that's true. Anyone who knows Danica knows she's pretty intense and fiery. You know, it could be she just relaxed a little bit. Life's good right now. And she might just, you know, running at the pace these guys run at is tiring. And she might have just, you know, said, God, looked around and said, God, life is good right now. And, and maybe just took a breath. And that's all it takes to be about three or four steps behind. I don't know. I mean, last night's run was was obviously just what the doctor ordered. Uh, I know Tony isn't too happy with Princess Sparkle Pony right now, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they will probably get over that. Nah, it's already over, Tommy. I mean, as you know, it's, it's, it's just racing. I think, uh, you know, like you said, sometimes you don't expect things from people. Uh, it, it won't happen again. And uh, I don't know. I, I have a, I, I had a, 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 a bunch of conversations with her about what, you know, she's, she was having a tough season. And as a driver, you know, sometimes you get one of those seasons. I mean, you start on the wrong foot. It's, it's not about what you do, how many cars you drive or, you know, how many times you travel. That, you know, the champ I won championships uh, not even thinking about. And then uh, when I concentrate a lot, I'm, I'm not winning the races for the last two years. So uh, I think it was just, uh, it's just a momentum. And she got it back. And uh, look at the race that she had yesterday. So hopefully she'll keep it concentrated. I know she has, a, I think, a, a nationwide race to do. Uh, this month and uh, you know I, I don't think it's messing up with her head I just think uh, you know it was just a bad start and we all have those uh, Mr. Kendall uh, 
Uh, TK, uh, number two here and I were having a talk earlier. If Danica Patrick takes a swing at you, uh, your response would be? I mean, you can't. I mean, you just got to go like this. You know, you, <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> and then, well, that's I wanted last year when she went march, when she was marching down to talk to the captain last year in India or the I guess right, it was last yeah, year. Two years ago, Briscoe, right? They stopped her before she, to, you know, before she got there. I, I just wanted her to get up to Roger and scream in his face and have him pat her on the head and send her to her room. That would have been fantastic, <laughs> but we never got to see that, unfortunately. Actually, it brings up a question I'd like to ask Tony. You've got great rivalries in F1 right now. You've always got them in cup. Why do we not have more of those really charged rivalries in IndyCar? Well, Tommy, I think we do. They're not very apparent. And I mean, if, if you guys are expecting us to get out of the car and, and, and you know, grab each other and and you know and and take each other out if you look at the race yesterday i if i wanted to make you know a lot of uh, enemies i mean i could get up to to dixon to to viso to danica and make it up i think we have it but uh, but we're doing it a little bit more of a quiet way we get it back at each other inside the racetrack but uh, you know the rivalry right now between uh, the guys out there i mean if you look at it, it it's been uh, you know not it's not as bad as people think all right we're going to head okay, to break. Well, there on lies. How do you bring those to people's attention? So back out for the break, right, Robin? Hey, that's very good. TK, you've been here. You know how it is because you got Andy telling you we're going to break now. Um, I got a question for you, Tony. You were, well, you'd, you'd committed to going to Ganassi, and then Michael flipped you back towards his team. He has stayed. Any regrets about not joining Ganassi? Not at all. I think uh, it's not because I'm driving for Michael, but Michael gave me my first opportunity. I won my first championship, and it's not because the team wasn't up to the level that, you know, we're not yet, that I was just uh, going to, you know, abandon the ship. I mean, I have a lot of respect for him and Tommy I mean I don't regret things that I've that I decided to do I'm very happy where I'm at yes I'm not winning as much races as I was but that's that's a good challenge that makes me wake up in the morning and go work out and say I need to get better Mr. Kendall we thank you for your participation in the show tonight we tell Mr. Servia that we're still trying to get him a ride we don't know how it's going to happen but it's always a pleasure to see you guys <laughs> he's racing willpower he should be racing willpower on the track instead of there thanks TK we'll see you down the road with a flying chicken, brother. See you guys. All right. Have a good season, TK. Thank you. All right. You guys stick around because we're going to break. When we come back, we're going to talk sprint car racing. Up next, I'll pay tribute to some old school sprint car racers. Who will be my number one on my top 10 list of all time USAC racers? A couple of weeks ago, I had the privilege of attending the reunion of the guys that race sprint cars at Terre Haute's Action Track. Former driver Duke Cook was the ringleader, and longtime promoter Don Smith was the host. They shared stories about the good old days of USAC racing, when a short track driver who shined at Terre Haute was pretty much destined for a ticket to the big cars and the Indianapolis 500. Terre Haute used to be the largest sprint car event of the year in the whole United States. So go, coming to Terre Haute was a big deal. You just had to run Terre Haute to get respect. It was where I learned to race uh, in sprint cars. You came uh, to this part of the country to race a sprint car. You went to Terre Haute, and if you did well there, everybody noticed. Terre Haute was the hardest track to win because all the competition came here. All the good drivers came here. And the grandstand and the field were full, and, you know, you were there to race. And Terre Haute was one of the best race tracks there was in the country. Talking about really good racing there. And the finest drivers that I can ever remember raced at Terre Haute. <laughs> What a lot of people don't realize is that the Holman Classic, which was held every May just as the Indianapolis 500 practice began, was one of the richest races in the country. And that's because they had a party the night before the race, where the drivers would all be auctioned off for big money to teams and businessmen and fans. Known as the Calcutta, it dwarfed any sprint car person in the country, and there was never a 1040 for him from the IRS. Don Smith was a great promoter. He put this all together. Uh, they kept nothing out of the purse. Uh, they kept nothing out of the Calcutta. 40% went to the driver, 60% to the group that bought them. And my suitcase was in excess of $40,000 in 1973. Dave Despain, you've heard of him, is always telling me to make a top 10 list of my favorite IndyCar drivers. But since we're into sprint cars tonight, why not go with the best in USAC, from my perspective, since watching in 1960. Now, before I hear from all you Steve Kinzer, Sammy Swindell, Doug Wolfgang, and Rick Ferkel fans, and you all start screaming, this is about non-wing sprint cars. Wings are for airplanes in USAC, which for my money is still the best racing in the land. 
So with apologies to Raleigh Beal and the families of the late Rich Vogler, Sheldon Kinzer, Roger McCluskey, and good old Judd Larson, here's the 10 best I got to see. Tenth on my list is a tie between Tom Bigelow and Jack Hewitt. Now it's not a cop-out, but a draw, as Biggie is the all-time king with 52 USAC wins, and Jackson rolled up 46 victories during their glory days. Number nine is Jan Opperman, the original outlaw. Op was a part-timer in USAC, but a full-time badass who never let a little thing like a broken nose slow him down. My all-time hero, Jim Herdebees, is number eight. Herc drove sprint cars in the lethal 60s like kids do today with a fearlessness and bravado that always left the paying customers standing and cheering. Number seven is Don Branson. Old Pappy was a diabetic driving with no medication or power steering, but that never stopped him from showing the kids the fast way around. Number six on my list is Bubby Jones. Old Bub talked as slow as he moved until the green flag waved, and then he usually found a quick way to the front. He was a master of the dirt. Number five is Larry Dixon. Lightning Larry wasn't spectacular, just a relentless force at the front during USAC's most competitive days when he was a three-time king and had great battles with Gary Bettenhausen. You can't have a list without A.J. Foyt. He's number four. Supertex won everything on four wheels and used his smooth, smart style to even make places like Langhorn and Salem look tame. Number three is Parnelli Jones. In only three seasons of full-time competition in USAC sprints, Rufus ruled by winning three consecutive championships and 25 features. Number two and always trying harder was Gary Bettenhausen. Nobody ever worked harder at making it than Gary B, who parlayed determination and on-track smarts into 40 victories and two championships. And number one on my list, drum roll please, is Poncho Carter. Equally adept on the high banks, hard slickies, or in the cushion, Poncho punished the competition in the mid-70s and earned his swagger with 42 wins. Now, one of the best sprint car drivers of all time is Lee Koonsman, who suffered two terrible injuries during his career but never lost his drive or his sense of humor. He's currently recovering from bypass surgery in Indianapolis and has some complications, but he's battling like always, and we wish him the best. And that leads us to the Golden Crowd question of the week. Who do you think is the best sprint car driver of all time, with or without wings? Okay, TK, it's a big week. You get to co-host Wind Tunnel with your hero. I was afraid I was not going to make it. Oh, you were going to make it. After oh, last well, night. I know that. But you get to run the prelude to a dream this week. Wednesday night at Eldora, we're going to have a pre-race show here on Speed. You get to run against some of the best guys in NASCAR. First time on dirt. I was there when Montoya made his debut. You're going to have so much fun, you'll probably quit Indy cars and become a sprint car driver. We'll see. I mean, I, I haven't seen a dirt track in my life live on TV. Only live on TV. Never seen live in person. Never seen those cars. Uh, I watch a couple of the races. Is now that they, uh, they, they, you know, to when Tony called for me to do it, I, you know, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun. And hopefully, uh, like you say, you always encourage me to do that, uh, you know, since I've known you. And uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll have the chance this week, and uh, I'm, I can't wait. It will be a lot of fun. You're the first IndyCar guy to compete. How did it happen? Did you did, did you go to Stewart, or did the people come to you? No, they came to us, and they offered me, uh, you know, I know they offered to the 500 winner all the time. When I asked, I said, well, I didn't win the 500, but uh, I was really touched by the, you know, the invitation. And, uh, you know, I, I jumped right in right away. I wanted to do it. Well, I can tell you one thing. You'll have more fun than you can ever imagine because sideways on the dirt is the way to race. Now, you can see Kanan and a bunch of other big-name racers take to the dirt in this Wednesday's sixth annual Prelude to the Dream from Eldora Speedway in Ohio. Speed will have a live pre-race show at 6 p.m. Eastern. The race is pay-per-view, so check your local satellite or cable provider for details. You know that guy that climbs the fence and screams and yells? The other didn't Brazilian. You, didn't the, you used to kick his butt all the time in any lights? So, yeah, and in go karts too. He should probably give you one of his rings. All right, we're going to go to, we haven't taken a lot of questions from fans because we get carried away. So we're going to take one of our Facebook questions from Stacy St. John. Oh, no, that's a different one. I didn't mean that one. I meant Greg Brown. I'm so sorry. Look at this one. Greg, Tony, can you explain the success of the Brazilian drivers? Is it something about speaking Portuguese that makes one go faster? 
Probably. They say it's the water that we drink, but uh, honestly, I think it's just a successful sport. I mean, in, in Brazil, we don't have much sport, many sports like America. So pretty much, you know, we have soccer and racing. So we have the luxury to build so many race car drivers that, you know, uh, when you have, I don't know, 300 kids, you're going to have two or three that come out really good. When you came here and you were a road racer and you didn't speak a lot of English and neither did Elio, you guys lived on Eric Cowden's <laughs> floor, for God's sakes. But you guys both became good oval track racers, and it's happened before. Ari Leindyke was a road racer. He became a, a good oval. Nigel Mansell won every race but one on an oval here. Why is it easier for you guys to, trans to make that transition than it is the other way around? Robbie, I think if you're a good race car driver coming from the street and road courses, you're going to be a good oval driver. Uh, ovals are very difficult uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense of, you know, you got to get, it's a lot of experience, you know, like you go to Kansas like this race, you kind of just, it's, it's more of like, like the, the NASCAR guys, the, the IndyCar guys go there, but they have so many, Mark Martin's been racing as long as I lived. And it's hard to beat that experience, but I think it's easier for us because it's more car control. And, you know, you see the sprint car guys go to IndyCar, and they have a lot of car control as well, but that's what I think it is. And, and you know, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, if you're a good race car driver, you have to be able to adapt and diversify, otherwise you won't survive. I'm hearing a little birdie tells me that we're going to have Milwaukee on the schedule next year. I can't wait. And Loudon possibly, which is a driver's track. And if we could ever get back to Phoenix, those are the three tracks I like to see and get rid of some of these cookie cutter things that are like Death Race 2000 and, and let the driver have a little more input. Let's stop having engineers tracks and have a driver's track because if you don't have a fast car and, and the big tracks, not Indy, but the other ones, you can't do anything. Hold that thought, young man. All right, up after the break, we're going to talk to American Le Mans Series team owner Duncan Dayton and his team prepares for their 24 Hours of Le Mans debut. Now, don't go anywhere, because TK is going to eat a hamburger in one bite, just like he ate that grilled cheese sandwich. An accomplished vintage racer with 10 victories in the Formula One races at Monaco, Duncan Dayton also owns and operates one of the top sports car teams in North America. And the defending ALMS champs are preparing to make their debut at Le Mans this weekend. Duncan joins us from somewhere in France. Hello, big man. How are you? I'm great, Robin. How are you doing? We're doing good. You know, speed's going to cover the race. We're fired up. It's Honda Performance Development's first time going to Le Mans. It's your team's first time going to Le Mans. You've raced there four times. But I think the great thing about it is, is a couple years ago, you went to Honda and basically said, hey, you guys don't know me from Adam, but I'm going to win Le Mans in the next 10 years with or without you. Do you recall the reaction? I think there was a little bit of disbelief, but uh, ultimately Robert Clark and John Mendel stuck true to the, the word of uh, Honda's um, moniker, which is the power of dreams, and they believed in my power of my dream to go to Le Mans. And, and uh, so we're here today when we're thrilled to be here. And I think, you know, you've got a great lineup. I mean, David Brabham, who was the most exciting guy in ALMS when you guys won your championship, Marino Franchitti, Dario's brother, who's been winning races, and Marco Werner, who's a three-time Le Mans champion, are, are your three drivers. So just talk a little bit about, you know, with Acura's help, you guys still think you're independents, like, like a guy like Briggs Cunningham. That's kind of who you resembled your team after. Sure. I mean, there were a lot of guys who were my heroes when I was growing up, Briggs Cunningham, uh, Lance Reventlow, Jim Kimberly. More recently, uh, Bob Aiken and, and even Rob Dyson, guys who took it to the Europeans on their own soil. And so, uh, you know, we're obviously where we are with the benefit of Honda's uh, great uh, um, help and, and largesse. But uh, we're a little bit more independent these days than we were in the past. And, and while it didn't suit their benefits to go when we were fully aligned with them, it now suits our benefits to go. And so we're thrilled to be here and, and happy to, to fly the HPD flag. Uh, Patron has been a great sponsor for you, but it won't be on the car this weekend. Explain who the sponsor is and, and what it's all about. Well, uh, the French liquor laws uh, ban advertising for liquor sponsors at sporting events. So, unfortunately, we can't fly the Tequila Patron flag here this weekend the way we do it normally in the ALMS. But we'll be flying Malaria No More's color. They're our charity partner. And, and uh, a child dies in Africa every 30 seconds. And if you think about the number of children that are going to die in Africa, uh, during the course of the 24-hour race, it's, it's staggering. But it wouldn't happen in America. It would uh, there'd be a great hue and cry to prevent it. And and we're encouraging our fans to go to miles to end malaria dot com to help us raise money to 
eradicate this disease that is totally curable by buying a bed net for $10. So hopefully that's something that some of the fans will participate in, and, and we're hoping to help cure malaria in Africa. Very cool. What about expectations? You, you've won this, you've run in this race four times. What, will you, what do you see this team doing? What would be, make you happy this weekend? Well, the, the HPD chassis has a new low downforce configuration that was helped develop by Worth Research, who is, who is designing the Virgin um, Formula One car. So it's a, it's a great package. The car has proven to be very quick in our sister team's hands. The Straka team has been running it at uh, Paul Ricard and at, uh, at uh, Spa for the, for the first two races in the European Le Mans series. And uh, the car has proven very quick, so we think we've got a great opportunity. We've got a great team, very uh, poised and, and polished professionals, and then we've got three great drivers. So we think if we can keep running to the end of the race and, and uh, stay out of trouble, we've got a really good shot at winning the thing. All right, my prediction is you will still drive one stint in somebody's helmet. They won't, they won't identify you on television on speed. Watch it this Saturday. You guys have a good time and good luck. Thanks a lot, Rob, and I appreciate it. Cheers, everyone. It's the biggest sports car race of the year, and speed is all over it. We're going to have 19 and a half hours of live, 24 hours of Le Mans coverage beginning at Saturday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. TK, Marco's going over there and run. Yeah. Michael ran. Any aspirations to be a Le Mans driver someday after you become a dirt car star Wednesday night? <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, you're talking about four wheels, a steering and an engine, especially Le Mans. I, uh, I definitely want to do it in the future. Is... Uh, like this weekend, will you get to do any testing before the prelude? Are you going to have as anybody? Because some of these guys go out in their own cars. That's why Montoya quit. I know. Uh, no, I won't. Uh, I didn't even do the sit fitting. So I'm going to have to. I'm testing on Watkins Glen on Wednesday all day. I'm catching a plane at, with Kyle Moyer at 4 in the afternoon and flying there to, to Eldora. And uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm going for fun. I'm not, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can. I mean, right. I know those guys have been running a lot. So, uh we do whatever we can, you know, the, the key is to have fun, and I'm glad that I survived the weekend. Just remember, you turn right to go left, and when those wheels are painted to the wall, pointed towards the wall, you gas it. Tony, you thanks here. We're not done yet with Wind Tunnel. Join TK and I over at speed.com at 10 p.m. for 30 extra minutes of Wind Tunnel Extra. Where we're going to take all these phone calls that have been waiting on us for the last 20 minutes. We're sorry we left you people hanging. But the good news is there's nothing like the Internet because we can ramble on and on. Stay tuned.